Are you right now at the verge of giving up on life? Do you battle condemnation and feel inadequate? Is there a part of you that doubts whether God truly loves you? Would you like to better comprehend God's love for you? Life is full of uncertainties, but in God, there is an assurance of a beautiful future. Be inspired as you receive God's word that will stir up faith and confidence in the love that God has for you. Join us today on The Covenant Light. Jesus, why don't you hey. Hallelujah. Welcome everyone. Go ahead as we've always done. Send this link to as many people as you can. It is our calling, it's our ministry. Go ahead and do that. Send the link to as many people as you can. And go ahead and worship him. Hallelujah. Like a little baby, you watch over me. You know they carry me, they play. You may 
Hallelujah. Go ahead, lift up your hands wherever you are and just worship him, give him praise and glory and honor. Father, we exalt you. Father, we honor you. Lord, I come before you this morning, not on the premise of my righteousness, but I come on the premise of the righteousness of Jesus. I come before you in honor and worship. Holy Spirit, I recognize your leadership. Would everyone joining in this morning in this devotion to you, we recognize your leadership and we surrender to you. We ask you to have your way. Holy Spirit, help us to pray even now as we should and take all of the glory in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. This morning I'm going to get you off praying and then we're going to go right into the word of God. I want you to begin to pray in the spirit. So pray with me now. Say, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, let your will be done in my life and that of my family. Let your will be done in my local assembly. Let your will be done in the world around me. In the name of Jesus. Say, I pray that men will come to salvation and the knowledge of the truth through my light in the name of Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, help me to pray as I should in Jesus' name. Go ahead and begin to pray in the Holy Spirit right now. Begin to pray in the Holy Ghost wherever you are. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we ask you for revelation knowledge to dawn upon our hearts as we look into your word in Jesus' mighty and precious name. And everyone said, Amen. This week, we are focusing on the ABCs of mission and the as we come to the close of this discourse on mission that we started about two months ago, we want to put in perspective the whole concept and practice of mission. And so we decided to put it together. What exactly is it that we need to be engaged in to be on mission with Jesus? And so we saw that there were at least five things that we need to be engaged in regularly. The first one we said, the A, acknowledge that you have been sent and set. Realize this. Accept it. Embrace that you have been sent and that you are set. The Bible tells us that. Jesus said, As the Father has sent me, so send I you. And he tells us that we are a city, look at that word, set on a hill. In Acts 17, the Bible says that he has made from one blood every nation of men to dwell on the face of the earth and has determined their pre-appointed times and the boundaries of their dwellings. So God predetermined you, the time you will exist on this earth. It's the reason why you were not in the 18th century or the 19th century. God pre-appointed this time to be when you will be on earth. This very season, you were born for such a time as this. And he has also pre-appointed the boundaries of your dwelling. So you're being a Nigerian, you're being a Kenyan, 
living in Kenya, living in Nairobi, living in Lagos, living in Finland, living in France, living in Dubai at this time was pre-appointed, was planned by God. And he said he did that so that they should seek the Lord in the hope that they might grope for him and find him, though he's not far from each one of us. So the A is to understand that you have been sent and that where you are right now, where your work is concerned, your location, your vocation are all set. God sets you there so that certain people will see you. You are a city set on a hill so that men can see your good works and glorify your father. We said the B is begin to observe who God has planted around you just so that they can see your light. God, by setting you as a hill, as a city on a hill, put you on that hill because of the valleys around you, because of those who are not on that hill, but who can see the city set on a hill. Begin to observe those who are in the valleys. If you are a city set on a hill and there are cities in the valleys around that hill and God set you on that hill so that people can see you. Who are those people that your light, when it is shining, will get to them? Not everybody in the world will notice your good works and glorify your Father. But there are people right now where you are, your workplace, your neighborhood, your, the supermarket you go every day, the normal cause of your life. There are people who observe you, who can see your light, who if you were, who can see your good works and be able to glorify your father. Who are those people that can see your good works? Who are those people that can be reached by your light? Begin to observe them. Find out who they are. And I said, even go as far as gathering their names Introduce yourself to them. Begin to introduce yourself to people and get their names. Your neighbors, the people living across the street. Your co-workers, the guy who cuts your hair, the guy who you go to buy stuff from his little kiosk. Begin to note the people and know the people that know you. And note the people that are in your circle of existence. Gather these names together. And the reason is because the C, A, B, C. The C is to claim them, command the enemy to take his blindfold off of them and call for laborers to be sent to them. This is the prayer part. You claim them. Call their name before God. He said, ask of me and I will give you the hidden for an inheritance. The hidden as an inheritance. So claim them the way you claim an inheritance. Command the enemy to take his blindfold off of them. Because the Bible tells us that the God of this world has blinded their minds in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. So that they do not see the glorious light of the gospel. That's the sea. The D is to demonstrate the life of God through faith and love. Demonstrate this life. The Bible says, in him was life and the life was the light of men. That life that God has given you, the life of God that is in you is the light. And when you start living out that life, you are shining the light. That life is a life of faith and love. We're going to be looking at that today. And then the E, the last one, is to now begin to engage with the persons of peace and their network. As you do A, B, C, and D, you will find certain people getting drawn to you, certain people who begin to like you and are beginning to listen to you. They, now, they want to hear what you have to say. When you start seeing those who begin to pay attention to them and begin to engage with them 
and develop that relationship, bringing them to the gospel, maybe bringing them to your church, your local assembly, so they can hear the gospel, or sharing the gospel with them yourself. One way or the other, get them to encounter the gospel. And when you do that, begin to reach their network. So we're going to look at that possibly, if time permits, today. So let's, let's go to this D. Demonstrate the life of God through faith and love. We've done A, B, and C this week. Demonstrate the life of God through faith and love. In, in, in John chapter 1 and verse 1. From verse 1. The Bible says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So, it began as Word. As Word, right? Then he says, He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through Him. And apart from Him, nothing came into being that has not come into being, that has come into being. Then verse 4, it says, In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. In verse 12, the Bible, in verse 14, the Bible says, And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we saw his glory. Glory as of the only begotten from the Father, full of grace and truth. You see, so the word has to become flesh. You and I as well, the Bible says we are born not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible seed, even the seed of the word of God. We were born of the word. We began as a product of God's word. You and I. But we can't remain and exist in the sphere of spoken word. We need to become flesh. That word needs to become flesh. That word needs to become life. It is that life that is the light of men. In other words, what we, what the word that formed us, what we preach, what who we are, what the Bible says, needs to become a life, a lifestyle for us to reach the people around us. That life is the light. That life is the light. So the word has to become a life. And it is now that lifestyle, that living of this life that becomes a witness to people around you. And they draw closer. And now they are beginning. You find certain, not every one of them, some will hate you for it. Jesus told us, when you start living this life, some will think you are too... You are too spooky. You are too spiritual. You are too religious. They will say all kinds of stuff. Jesus said the ones that resist you and refuse, he said dust off. Dust off their city. Remember? You are are a city set on a hill. There are other cities in the valley. He said dust, clean off the dust of their city from your legs. Don't be bothered about who rejects you. Many will reject you because of that lifestyle. And many of us have failed to live this life because we are afraid of being rejected. We are afraid of being rejected. We are afraid of losing people who we consider friends because they will consider us too spooky or too religious. But Jesus said you need to leave this life in front of them. Jesus said let your light so shine before men Don't turn on your light in the room. You know, pray. You know, a lot of people, someone once said, if Christianity was illegal, a lot of people will not have enough evidence in their life to convict them. If Christianity were to become illegal in 2022, and there is now a Christianity police to to find out who are Christians, 
a lot of people, if you go to their social media, go talk to their friends, they will swear, their friends will swear that they are not Christians. If you go to their social media, you will find nothing that will implicate them. They are trying to be the secret service of, the, of Christianity, of God. But God doesn't have any secret service. He said, let your light shine before men, not in the privacy of your room. Don't pray only in your room and have faith only in your room and, and declare positive words about your life only in your room. But when you are out there, you, you blend in. Jesus said, when you go to a city, say, peace be to this house. When you get into a city. In other words, announce your intentions. Don't go in there and blend in. No, go in there, stand out. Stand out to a point where they question why you are the way you are. First Peter 3 verse 15 says, then be ready to give them an answer. But you need to stand out to a point where live this life before them, deliberately before them. You know, some people feel this borders on hypocrisy. But no, hypocrisy is when you are someone else outside than you are inside. See, so if I normally pray over my food, then I go to a restaurant Nothing wrong. It's not hypocritical for me to pray over my food in the restaurant. But some people will never do that because then others will know that they are Christians or that they pray over their food. But they do pray over their food at home. You see, they let their light shine in the house but never outside the house. If I would never say that I am sick, I have never said that. If I would never make a negative declaration like, oh, I think this, this, this cold is killing me. Now, I would never talk that way because I know the power of the spoken word and I've stayed in divine health for decades because I've watched such words. If I am like that in my private moments, then if someone around me says, look at you, this cold is going to kill you. Now, I could quietly, I could just say, oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm doing? I'm trying to keep my light from shining. I'm trying to be different on the outside than I am on the inside. No, I should say, oh, no, 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 no. The cold can't kill me. I can't die in an accident. What are you talking about? You see, now you are letting your light shine, not in the privacy of your home, but before men. You are deliberately letting it shine. You see, you can't live this way for months and months and months and years and nobody asks you for the reason for your faith. You can't live this way. On and on and on. In fact, I can guarantee you, if you live this way, within a space of a month or two, somebody will ask you, why? What do you mean by that? Why did you say that? Tell me more about that. You know. Um, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15 says, But sanctify Christ as Lord in your hearts, always being ready to make a defense to everyone who asks you, to give an account for the hope that is in you, yet with gentleness and reverence, with respect, with honor. But be ready. Why would he tell you to be ready if nobody ever asks you? And you need to ask yourself, why has nobody ever asked me for the, to give account for the hope that is in me? Why do you expect that you will not be sick? Why do you think why do you pray over your food? What, what's your expectation? That's what hope is. What drives you? What makes you pray over food? Do you think that, you, that, that the poison in the food will now die because you prayed over it? Is the food better because you prayed over it? Those are questions asking for the reason for your hope. But how will they know that you have a different expectation from them? Bible says, they will say there's a casting down. You will say there's a lifting up. Many people will keep quiet 
then they will go home and say there's a lifting up. No, say there's a lifting up right there. Live this life of faith and love before them. And be ready. You know, it's like when somebody holds that gun uh, uh, um, for, for athletes as they're about to run a race and says, on your marks, get ready. You know that there's something coming. You wouldn't tell me to get ready if there's nothing coming. The Bible expects that people should be regularly asking you for the reason for your hope. That it says, on your marks, get ready, answer them. <laughs> That's literally what Peter was saying. On your marks, get ready, answer them. Who has asked you lately? If no one has, this is the place where you are missing it. Demonstrating. This D is where you are missing it. You've not been demonstrating that life of God through faith and love enough. Look at what, what Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Therefore, since we have this ministry, what ministry do we have? Of course, he had already, he, he, he mentions that he continues in chapter 5 uh, 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 of 2 Corinthians. You know, he said that we have received a ministry, the ministry of reconciliation. The ministry of reconciliation said, to, to wit that God was in Christ Jesus, reconciling the world to himself, not counting men's sins against them, and has given us the word, the ministry of reconciliation. That's the ministry we have received. And so he says to us, seeing that we have received this ministry, how do we go about it? What is the thing we really do? As we have received mercy, we do not lose heart. We do not lose that because people will reject us. People will. There are people who will even condemn us because of this ministry. But don't lose heart. But look at what you do. But we have renounced the hidden things of shame. Not walking in craftiness. Not handling the word of God deceitfully. But by manifestation of the truth. Manifestation of the truth. Now this is not talking about perfection. Oh, so you know what? But I still have some issues in my life. No, it's talking about manifesting God, the word of God, the truth. Remember, in the beginning was the word. It started with the word. That word has to become life. Manifesting the truth. That's what this life is. This life is a manifestation of the word. The word says you are healed. Say you are healed. And say it boldly in front of people. The word, the word of God says you are prosperous. Say you are prosperous. Say it in front of people. Let them ask you why you are saying that. The word of God says that you are love. Well, when you feel angry and you act in ways contrary to love, you see, you're not perfect. But right there, say, no, that's not who I am. God's word tells me I am love. And I shouldn't have said that to you. And I apologize. You see, that's the difference. Perfection means you never miss it. But what manifestation of the truth is choosing to be on the side of the word. What the word says is what you say. What the word says you are is who you say you are. What the word of God says you can do. You say you can do that. And you do that. So if the word of God says you are a love being. And you act in ways contrary to that. It shows you are not perfect. So, But don't lose heart. Don't break down. Don't say oh maybe I'm not all of that. No. Agree with the word. And manifest that truth. Say to those people right there. Oh I'm so sorry I shouldn't have said that to you. Because that's not who I am. I am a love being. You can't talk that way for long without somebody saying, hey, this, what exactly is this thing you always talk about? What exactly is this thing? You're a love being. You know. If somebody is sick around you, ask them, can I pray with you? Can I pray for you? This life Look at what the, Paul was saying again. But by the manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. I like the fact that he said every man. Even the ones that criticize you, in their conscience, you have commended. You know the word commend is where you got, get the word recommend. Recommend is to commend again. All right? Recommend. Right? So what is a recommendation? 
In other words, someone is attesting to you. Someone is recommending you to somebody else. Well, the Bible says you should commend yourself to, to other people. In other words, attest to the word. Attest to who you truly are. You are the word of God. You are the epistle of Jesus. You are the epistle of Christ. You are the written word to the people. Attest to that. Be that to the people. Commend yourself to their consciences. Every man's conscience is... You'll find that every man's conscience has you commended to it. That's what happened to Nicodemus. Came to Jesus at night and said, we know. He didn't say, I know. He said, we know. We, the Pharisees, all of us know that you are a teacher sent from God. You know, even though they criticized him in the, in the daytime because they didn't want to lose their jobs or lose their reputation because he came against a lot of the things that they had preached. But they, he said, we know that you are a teacher come from God for no man can do the things you do. Jesus lived a life that constantly demanded a question. Constantly. You had to ask, why are you the way you are? The people, the multitude said, never man speak like this man. That's the life we are called to live, folks. Let people around you say, people, most people don't talk the way you talk. Most people don't act the way you act. And the Bible tells us the two things, the two directions of this. Faith and love. Faith and love. Galatians 6 verse 15. There is, in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision, but the new creation. In 5 and verse 6 of Galatians, it says, in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision, but faith that works by love. Paul said, I am not, God is not unrighteous. To forget your work of faith, your labor of love, and your patience of hope. When you bring these things together, you realize that this life is a life of faith. Speak faith. Speak faith. Be bold. Speak faith. I'm prosperous. I have abundance. Even in the midst of a struggle financially. Speak faith. I am healthy and I'm healed. Even in the midst of pain in your body. Let them ask you why you think so. Then preach the gospel. As, you know, and tell them what the Bible says. And why you believe as you do. Some will laugh at you and mock you and move on. Some others will be drawn to you. Those are your persons of peace. Tomorrow we'll look at how to deal with them. How to begin to engage those persons of peace that are drawn to you. But you have to speak and act in faith. Someone is sick, that's faith. Pray for the person. Don't worry about, oh, you know, I, 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 God, I don't want to be about this person. Well, I, please heal him. No, no, no. Pray for the person. You will see a lot of miracles. Pray for the person. And don't worry about how you pray. Just say, God, I, I help, help this person, please. You'll be shocked. Miracles are taking place. <laughs> it's faith and love. So speak faith, stand in faith, but also walk in love. Walk in love. And where you fail or miss it, accept that. Accept that. Where you fail or miss it, say it. Say, this is not me. <clears throat> I shouldn't have shouted the way I did at you. I shouldn't have said those words to you. But that's not who I am. I'm a love being. I'm a new creation. You can't, um, just imagine if you did what I'm talking about right now over the next one month. You know you can't do that without someone asking you, what, sorry, what did you say? Oh, they're asking for the reason for your hope. Sorry, why did you say that? They're asking for the reason for your hope. So here it is. You have acknowledged that you are sent and set. You have begun to note the people that are, the cities that are in the valley of your hill who God has positioned to be able to observe you. You have claimed them, called for laborers to be sent to them, and commanded the enemy to take his hands off of them, the sea. And now you are living a life demonstrating the life of God through faith and love. You are on mission. And people will start popping up. The laborer himself, the chief laborer, will start, you start seeing people rise within that whole structure and construct. Start seeing people rise and get closer to you. And then you begin to deal and walk with those people. We're going to talk about that tomorrow. Hallelujah. Father, we give you praise. Here is it. I'm going to pray for you like I always do. I'm going to make a bold request on your behalf. 
Father, we give you praise and glory and honor. And we exalt you. Lord, I'm asking you to take the greatest blessing that everyone under the sound of my voice has ever experienced. The greatest blessing that has come into their manifestation in their lives. And I'm asking you to multiply it by a thousand. Thank you, Father. I ask for this specifically. The greatest blessing. Either in quality or in quantity as they desire. Quality of marriage. Quality of a spouse. Quantity of finances. But take the greatest blessing that they are grateful for. And multiply it by a thousand. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. That's my bold request today. It is answered. It's done. Believe it with me and praise God for it. Thank you for joining in today. I look forward to have you join me again tomorrow. Till then, remember, you are loved by God and it's unconditional. And because of that love you're experiencing is wisdom, power, and favor. Hallelujah. Have a wonderful day in Jesus' name. Amen.